Lord Jesus, we come before you today. And Lord, whatever seeds you're planting in our hearts, Lord God, let them be well watered, Lord God, and let them take root, Lord. Whatever word, Lord God, that you have for us, Lord God, let it be embedded, Lord God, upon our hearts, Lord God. And Father, right now, we just invite, Lord God, the presence of the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place, in this sanctuary this morning. Have your way in our lives. Teach us and lead us and show us how to become more like you, Lord. We thank you this morning for all that you've done and all that you're doing. Speak to us today. Strengthen us and encourage us and motivate us to bring forth the good news in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give the Lord a great big clap offering this morning. Amen. <laughs> Going to let the kids go off to class. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody may be seated this morning. I want to talk to you this morning about being broken but not, not done. Or broken and, and never finished. You know, um, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, starting in verse 17, it says, Instead of bronze, I will bring gold, and instead of iron, I will bring silver. And instead of wood, bronze, and instead of stones, iron, and instead of the tyranny of the present, I will appoint peace as your officers and your righteousness, your rulers. And right now, we're going to go through some times of violence. In verse 18, it says, violence will not be heard again in your land, nor devastation or destruction within your borders. But you will, but your walls will call on your walls salvation and your gates praise to God. The sun will no longer be your light by day, nor shall the bright glow of the moon give light to you. But the Lord will be an everlasting light for you, Hallelujah. and your God will be your glory and splendor. You know, there's going to be a time, a time that's coming soon that we're no longer going to be having our eyes upon the, the physical things and the carnal things of this world, you know, but it's going to be upon Jesus, you know, what our Savior and our Lord, you know what I mean? And we're finally going to, going to realize why we're here. You know, in Isaiah 61, verse 1, it says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted and to proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives and freedom to prisoners. Hallelujah. Man. He's called, he's commissioned us as a people. But a lot of times, you know what, we go through things in life and we get hurt or we get broken. You know what, or sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, we feel like we've been going and going and going, you know what, and now we just feel like we ain't got no more to give. But you got to keep on going. Why? Because the word of God tells us that he has anointed us, that he has commissioned us to bring good news. To those who are afflicted and humbled. When's the last time we shared the good news with somebody, church? Somebody besides somebody from church. When's the last time you shared the good news with somebody at work? You know what? When's the last time you, you shared the good news with a relative that gave you a phone call that don't have the same view as you have? When's the last time you shared the good news with a perfect stranger? At a corner or somewhere. 
You know, he sent us to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. To bind up the wounds. You know, a lot of times we're waiting for God to do all these things when God has commissioned us to, to do a work church. You know what, there's a song that we used to say, sing here, you know what it said? You know what, God, let me be your hands. You know what, God, let me be your eyes. You know what, God, let me be your feet. You know what, God, let me be today. You know what, who you've called me to be, Lord God. You know what, created me a clean heart, oh Lord, and renew a right, uh, a steadfast spirit within me, Lord God. You know what? Set a fire upon the altar of my heart, Lord God, once again, Lord God, that, that burns, Lord God, with compassion, Lord God, that's ferocious as a lion, that has compassion for those that are weak, those that are, you know, all messed up because I want to help them because they're brokenhearted. I want to give them a release from their confinement and their condemnation. You know what? And that's spiritual, that's supernatural, that takes place during spiritual warfare church. You know what? A lot of those brand new Christians are not willing to engage in spiritual warfare. You know what? It takes a seasoned Christian, a, a Christian who's been serving the Lord for, for a little while to begin to, to want to engage in these certain types of activities. But that's what we've been called to do. And to give freedom to the prisoners. You know, a lot of people right now, I'm going to say this, you know what? 100% of people are prisoners to their own mentality. But you know who sets you free? God sets you free. Go with me to the book of Romans this morning, chapter 10. Starting in verse 15. And it says, and how will they preach unless they are commissioned? Right there. Boom. We just read in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, that you have been commissioned. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a guy that I work with, you know what I mean? And he, and he tells me, who teach you? You know, who teach you these things? Who teach you? You know what? The Holy Ghost teach me. The Holy Ghost teach you. You know what? And right now, you know what? You've been commissioned, you know, and in the scripture right here in 15, it says, and will they, and how will they preach unless they are commissioned? You know what? You have the authority to preach. You know what preaching is? Preaching is sharing the good news. And he says, and sent for that purpose, just as it is written and forever remains written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. Ah. You know, there's those people in life, you know what, that you're just so excited to see? Man, because they always, you know, they just bring that, that good aura with them, you know what I mean, man? They just, everything about them, you know what I mean? You're just, you're just so glad that they're there, you know what I mean? Like, man, I'm so glad you showed up today, man. Man, I thought today was going to be another one of those days, and then you showed up. Now my day is just going to be that much better. Why? Because you bring the good news. You know what? You bring the gospel with you. You know what? You bring, because you, bring, you embody it, and, and, and you live it, Amen. In verse 16, it says, But they did not all pay attention to the good news of salvation. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? You know, you also got those two, you know what I mean? Why is he always so happy? <laughs> Why are they so positive all the time? Huh? I'll tell you why I'm so happy and why I'm so positive all the time. Why? Because I used to think just like you did. You know, and I was always negative, you know what? And I was pointing out all the flaws all the time. And I was miserable and disappointed every single day of my life. But when the Lord changed my view and I started being positive about things, you know what? And happy about things. Then I was happy about myself. And who I was in Christ Jesus. You know, and I was happy with my imperfections. I was happy with my flaws. 
I was happy with my failures and my faults. I was happy. See, and that's the way that we got to be, church. Verse 17 says, so faith comes from hearing what is told. Man, I like that. So faith comes from hearing what is told, and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. In verse 18, he says, but I say, did they not hear? Indeed, they have. I never heard of the gospel before. I never heard of your Jesus. I never heard of Christianity. Oh, I quit it. Yes, you have. Everybody's heard of Christianity. <laughs> if one religion you've heard about is Christianity, I guarantee you you've heard because everybody likes to talk about Christianity. So you've heard about Christianity. And he says, their voice, that of creation bearing God's message, has gone out to all the earth and their words to the farthest ends of the world. But I say, see, so right here he's telling us that the word has went out. Amen. A lot of people are still, oh, the word has to go out to all four corners of the earth. And it's already went out. Yes. It's already there. That's right. Why? Because his, his word is in creation. It's evident all around us in the flowers, in the moon, in the stars, everything, in water, in, in everything that's around us. God is evident in it. Why? Because he created it. He created it. And for somebody to say that they don't know God, they lie. Because it's evident all around them. You cannot say that you enjoy taking a, a, a drink of water, the cool drink of water, and not say that you love God. Why? Because God made that water. You know what? You cannot say that you enjoy taking in, you know what, a deep breath of fresh air. You know what? And not say that you don't like God. Why? Because God created that air that you breathe. Amen? Praise God. See, we got to look at things the other way, church. See, a lot of people don't realize that God's word is already out there. God is evident everywhere. People just refuse to believe like the Israelites did. In verse 19, it says, But I say, did Israel fail to understand that the gospel was to go also to the Gentiles? And first Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation, the Gentiles. Thank you, Jesus. I'll make you jealous. Man, he says, I'm going to make you jealous. You know what? Are people jealous of, of what God's doing in your life right now, church? Man, you know, they call, them, they call them haters in the world. You know what? There were songs that they would sing about haters, and they would say, bye-bye, hater. Because I don't care what you say. Keep on hating. Keep on hating, hater. Why? Because the more you hate, the more it makes me want to do better for myself. So keep on hating. You know what? And he wanted them to hate these people. And they did. Man, you know what? The Israelites looked at the, the people who were not like them like scum. Put it on the other foot. Christians these days. Look at sinners like scum when they're sinners themselves in need of a Savior. We're all sinners in need of a Savior. So why are we look at and looking at people through, through worldly eyes and not through the eyes of Christ? And he says, with the nation that lacks understanding, I will make you angry. Ooh, man. Convicts, murderers, thieves, fornicators, adulterers, pedophiles, man. He's using all kinds of people that lack understanding, amen, to make real people that think they know about God angry. Well, I went to Bible college. I went over here. I did this. I got a doctorate in that. I'm a millionaire. I'm a billionaire. I'm a trillionaire. So what? I ain't got a nickel in my pocket, but God uses me for his glory and his honor. Amen? Praise God. You know, God makes nobody somebodies. He'll take a homeless guy on the corner, you know what, that don't smell so good and, and hasn't eaten in a while and use him to preach the gospel to many and win many over for Christ. Amen. He'll take the drunkard. He'll take the alcoholic, the drug addict. He'll take anybody he chooses to use. Amen. Out of a box of crayons 
to use for his glory and his honor. In verse 20, it says, Then Isaiah is very bold and says, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not consciously ask for me. Man, when we were going through what we were going through or what we were doing, what we were doing in life, were we looking for God? I wasn't looking for God. But guess what? We were found by him. You know, have you ever heard of those in life, that just those people that try too hard to be somebody that they ain't? That's what I'm talking about. You know, I was one of those. I was one of those that always tried to try tried so hard to be somebody that I wasn't. Church. And maybe you weren't, but you know what? I could be honest and say that that I was. Why? Because I just wanted to fit in. I never fit in in life. You know what? So I would go above and beyond. You know what? And when it, when it came to, to the streets, you know what I mean? And, and to gangs and to drugs and, and all that stuff and that lifestyle and the people that I were involved in, you know what I mean? Like, man, when I ran into to, to the gang members, you know what, man? I, I wanted to, to be bigger and badder. So you know what? I puffed myself up and, and I talked and I did all kinds of things. You know what? That, that wasn't me. When it came to drugs, the same way, I engulfed myself and did all kinds of things and, and became an individual that wasn't me because I wanted to try to fit in. But it doesn't work that way, church. You know what? God wants to use us that don't fit in. And he wants to use us for his glory and honor. You know, have you ever sat down with those kid, with kids and just... You know, busted out the old crayons to color some pictures. You know, my, my mom does this. I remember doing it before, you know what I mean, a few times. You know, maybe some of you guys have done it with grandkids, nieces, and nephews. You know, man, we're bored. We ain't got nothing to do. Man, I got these old coloring books, man, and these old crayons. How about these? You know, and not just a box of new crayons, you know, that everybody else wants to go grab off the shelf or let's go to the store and grab them. You get the old box of crayons. And I would pick out the worn ones that had been used to color dozens of pictures. You know, I hear the kids all the time around the, around the table when you go to a restaurant, you know what, they, they want the good crayons. Oh, this crayon's broken. And then we try to doctor it up. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. You know, I'll get you another one. Wait, waitress, can I get some more crayons, please? Instead of telling them, you know what? Did you know that the broken crayons are the best crayons? Yep. Amen. Yep. The broken crayons are the best crayons. Before you only had one, now you have two. Amen. You know what? With the other one, it only had a point, and you could only make one little line. With this one, you can make squiggly little lines. <laughs> You know what? You can do so much more with the broken crayon, but can you see it? Can you envision it? You got to envision it, church. You know, and, and why would that be? Because in our throwaway society, it would be easy to think that the work of these crayons was done and that it needs to be replaced with some new ones. You know, everybody wants to replace the old ones with new ones. Man, our cars ain't working right. We want a new car. I do. <laughs> I, <guess. laughs> I want a new car. You know what? It makes a little noise. I want a new car. I want a new car. You know, it's always something we want new. Once, once, once we've used it for, for what, we've, what we have achieved our purpose for it, it's done and we want to throw it away. Just like in a crayon box, in, in this society, it's, it's the same way. However, not me, I would begin to color with these broken, worn-out crayons. And I believe that my kids would look at me and tell me that my coloring page was beautiful. Amen. And then they would begin to say, well, let me use your broken crayons. Yeah. Because if you could create a masterpiece with those broken crayons, I want to use those ones. Why? Because when I color with the new ones, it don't look like that one. How many of you guys have ever tried to sit down and have a coloring contest with your kids? <laughs> color inside the lines. 
Huh? <laughs> a little shade over here. We get all artistic, don't we? With some crayons. Eee, man. Well, that's how we got to get, church. You know? Because broken crayons could still be used. You know, your broken life could still be used. Your brokenness and the things that have been going on in your life still can be used. You know, and I don't care how long you've been serving God and how long you've been coming to church. You know what? You still can be used. You know what? Stop telling yourself, I'm too old to do this, and I'm too old to do that. You're not too old to do any of that, man. Look in the Bible. These men lived on to be in their hundreds, amen, even past that. And God used them every single day and every step of the way. You're not too old to be used. It's your heart. You know, I've never understand, understood why when we get older, how come is it when we get older, our ears bother us more? And the reason why I say our ears bother us more is because noise bother us. Man, them kids are too loud. Huh? That music is too loud. My viejo is too loud. Huh? And everything starts getting too loud. And those things that we always used to listen to, all loud. They start bothering us and annoying us. Man. Did you ever think that God wants to use your brokenness? Now, why is it, God, that kids annoy me so much? Amen. You know what? If Brother Fred was here, good thing we, we finally got the, rec we got the recording, Brother Fred. I got it this time. Amen. But him, same thing. He tells me, he goes, I don't like kids. <laughs> But the Lord uses him, amen, with, with kids. Praise God. Him and his wife, his whole family. Amen. You know, they don't even realize it, but they're involved in children's ministry. Amen. And God uses them for that. Amen. You know, many of us, there's things that we, you know, get annoyed about or frustrated about. But that's where God wants to use us. Because he's trying to, to build something up in us. You know what? He wants to, to show us that he can use that to paint a beautiful picture. Amen. You know what? And just like that broken, worn out crayon, we can also feel useless to God because of the mistakes we have made or the things that we, that, 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 you know, that we have done. Sometimes do you feel like that? You know, let's say, for instance, you felt like doing a certain thing for the Lord and you felt like the Lord was calling you to do a certain thing and you, you know what, fell in sin or you committed some type of sin and you got broke and hurt, you know what, and you never went out to fulfill that thing that God was calling you to do because you just were broken. You felt like you were unworthy. You know, we feel broken and ugly and useless. Man, I know how that feels, church. And I know you know how that feels because a lot of us feel like that more often than not. You know, we think God would rather have someone else do his work. You know what? Use them, Lord, because they're better equipped, Lord. You know what? Use them, Lord, because they're more holy. Use them, Lord, because I'm still struggling with this, 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 and this. You know what, devil? You're a liar. And right now I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command you to go back to the pits of hell where you came from. Yeah. You know, we want the Lord to use someone who has it all together. I don't know about you, church, but I don't know anybody that got it all together. <laughs> and the person who looks like they got it all together, man, their life is worse off than those that don't look like they got it together. The person who don't look like he got it together, they got it more together than the person that looks like they got it together. Amen. I can just tell you that, church. I know it. Come on. You know, the truth is, is we all have brokenness in our lives. And many times we compare our bloopers to somebody else's highlights. You know, why do we always do that, church, to ourselves? Why is it, church, that we always like to measure ourselves up with others this way? We say to ourselves, all this good stuff is happening for them, and why not for me? And why is this happening for them, Lord, and why not me? Why can't I get a break, Lord? 
Man, why is my neighbor happy? Man, if only you could put a camera and a microphone in that house. <laughs> Man, I don't know. That's probably what the neighbors say about us, honey. Is that what you said? Híjole. We're always yelling at well, that's ya. So, so I told my honey, I was like, man, I was like, I liked it better when we lived in a small apartment. I said, because we could hear each other. I said, now we live in a bigger house. I said, man, I was like, ain't nobody here, nobody. And they're right there. I said, híjole, what's going on? Can't hear nobody. Man, but they hear us screaming at the kids. Just imagine what they say. You know, I don't care what they say. Why? Because they're my kids. <laughs> and if anybody's going to yell at my kids, I'm going to yell at my kids. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. I don't need the neighbors yelling at my kids because they tore down the fence or did something. I'm going to catch them right away and start yelling at them. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. And everybody's going to know what you is. That's, yeah, that's a neighbor that yells all the time. <laughs> that's my yelling neighbor. Amen? Praise God. You know what? It's time to take a step back and thank God that you may not be the brightest color of crayon in the box, but that you still got color. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. You ain't the brightest color, but you still got color, church. Yeah. Man. Man, that's, that's a blessing. How many of you like to be the brown crayon? <laughs> How come you didn't raise your hands? You're all brown, man. You're all brown crayons. <laughs> Somebody's got to be the brown crayon. See, there we go. We got to work on that. It's the color brown. Amen. That's what it is. You got to start enjoying being the color brown. You know what? They use the color brown for a lot of things. You know what? Not just for one thing. They use the color brown to, to bring out, you know what, accents in, in other colors. You know what? The color brown represents dirt. They use it in trees and bark. You know what? You can't have, you know what, the color of leaves and all that on trees if you didn't have the color brown. And you wouldn't have you and I if there wasn't brown. <laughs> Amen. So praise God praise for the color brown in the box. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know what the truth is? Is that no one has a perfect life. Amen. Right. You know what? No one has a perfect life. Church, nobody. Do you know somebody who has a perfect Tell me somebody who has. Just tell me one person that has a perfect life. You know, you hear all those fairy tales on, on TV, huh? And those love, those love stories. Oh, my parents were like the most best parents ever. They got together in high school, and they, they were sweethearts, and they got married, and boof, magically we popped out, and we had the best life. <laughs> Shut up. No, you didn't. <laughs> Stop lying. Huh? <laughs> you know what? And just like that broken crayon, God is always able to use our brokenness to create something beautiful, Amen. a masterpiece. He created a masterpiece, amen. And many times what we see as our biggest mistakes and failures can become what God uses the most. You know what? That's what God uses the most. Our mistakes, our biggest mistakes and failures, God uses those the most. But however, the enemy in our minds often tells us we are worthless and no longer useful for God's kingdom. You know, the enemy likes to lie to us every single day, man. How many of the enemy has been talking to you? Huh? Man, if the enemy ain't talking to you, something's wrong, church. Because if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the enemy is talking to you. Why? Because he wants to try to catch you slipping up, man, just like he did Eve in the garden and Adam. Don't, don't let me mistake. Adam was in there, too. And he did the same thing. You know, a little do we know that God is using our, broken, no, our broken, brokenness to create something more beautiful than we could ever imagine. You know what, that your life is impacting somebody else's life? And you never even realized it. I heard a story of an individual who used to be involved with youth. And he used to, you know, uh, do Bible studies with them. And quite years passed by, this youth ended up going off to college and becoming a mother and having a family of her own. And she ended up running into this guy again at a church and asked this individual, and she said, do you remember me? And he sternly said, he goes, I don't. Sorry, forgive me. And she said, she goes, you used to teach Bible studies. 
And she says, and the Bible studies that you used to taught impacted my life. When I started attending your Bible studies, I was contemplating suicide. She said, but after attending your Bible studies and, 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 and receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, she goes, I went on through life to graduate high school and have my own children and be married, you know what I mean, and have, have a, you know, a decent life ahead of me. He didn't even know. You know, what a blessing. But see, he didn't want to be a teacher. He said that's something that he never wanted to do. But he did it. And in doing so, he impacted somebody's life. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, it says, Therefore, Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we have borne testimony to the truth. Let us stir off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight, that sin which so readily, defeatly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patience and endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader of the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and, if, and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He for the joy for obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You know what? Have you ever sensed God leading you into ministry but didn't think that God could use you? Have you thought that, Thea? Have you ever thought that, Thea? Mm -hmm. She says, I know I can't do that. I'm not a teacher. I'm not this and that. You are, and God has your teacher and everything, you know, but she says you're all teachers here. Amen. Amen. How about you, Brother CJ? Uh, definitely. I always thought it would be just, I always thought it would be just one particular area. Yeah. Because I just thought that, and that's what my heart felt. But <laughs> lately, <laughs> especially this past two weeks, I, you know, the fact of the matter, I said, I don't think. What we are uncomfortable with that faith, God's going to keep us grounded. You know what you're saying right now, and what you stood with us for. Because I never thought I'd want to ever help a kid. I always thought it'd be just youth and teach them Bible study. You know, you know, my friends and stuff. But I, Amen. I know that you know that's not how you said. It's just more important. It's a bigger picture than me. You know, so. Praise God. And you know, there's even times in ministry that that we come to the Lord, and we do something. You know, like, for instance, maybe sin or something, and what happens is we don't feel worthy to do what God has called us to do. You know, I've seen so many people in the church step down from a position instead of stepping up and into a position. They'd rather step down and give up and quit instead of stepping up and into it. You know what? I made a mistake. I had an individual who, who was under me that, you know, that I was training up. And, uh, you know, needless to say, you know, he, he went out and, 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 and was drinking. And I went out and, and I found him, you know, and, and he felt so guilty, you know what I mean, with himself. You know what? That he wanted to give up and quit. And I told him, nah. I said, I go, you know what? I said, this is between me and you, brother. I said, nobody has to know about it. I'm not trying to, you know, exploit, you know, what's going on in your life. I said, but you know what? You're better than this. And I said, you know what? You made a mistake. So let's get up and let's keep on moving. You can do it. Keep moving forward. Don't let the enemy lie to you and allow this to hold you back. And see, and that's what we got to do. You know what? And then he ended up keep, keeping on going and doing what he was doing. You know what I mean? I don't know what he's doing now, but... You know, those are the things that we got to realize is, you know what, that even us in our lives, the failures and the faults that we have does not disqualify us from being used by God. You know what, that's why we got to repent and ask for forgiveness, amen. Just ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. You know what, maybe you have practiced in an act or an event you should not have or you would, uh, you know, I would say sin. 
You know, not just sin, you know, any type of sin, the type of sin that you didn't want anyone to find out about. You know, because usually those are the ones that, that pull you, you know what I mean, out of a, a position or make you do something different. You know, it could be a number of things, but I'm just talking about this right now. I'm not, it could be a different circumstance. And the thought in my mind, you know what I mean, or in their mind will torment them. You know, you hear stupid thoughts, like the enemy telling you, you're stupid. You hear him tell you, you know what, you knew better. How could you? And just as we are to forgive others, guess what? I really do believe that you are to forgive yourself. Amen. You know, why is it that we're so quick to, to oh, God's word says that I got to forgive somebody else. You know, well, have you forgiven yourself? You know what, how can you forgive somebody, somebody else if you don't know how to forgive yourself? You know, that's why it is in the world, you know what, when we tell somebody or we say, you know what, I forgave them, but you know what, we never truly did forgive them. Why? Because we've never truly learned how to forgive ourselves. And we would truly learn how to forgive ourselves to, you know what, just forget about it, to turn away from it and to change, then we would truly know how to forgive somebody else out there in the world and to love our brothers, amen, and to love our enemies. You know, we need to confess our sins to Christ. You know what? That's the first step. I do believe that. But there's more. After that step of taking, you know, the confession of our sins, we have to truly repent. Truly repent. You know how many Christians are in the church that never truly repented? Man, they say, oh, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord. But they go and do the same thing. You know what? That's not true re repentance. You know what? You might as well not even pray for that because you're not even planning on, you know, quitting it. But when you plan on quitting it, ask, repent, and ask God for strength, and he'll get you through it. But if you're not even willing to let it go or change from it, then stop wasting your time and stop wasting God's. Amen. You know, you must no longer be actively involved in that sin. That's what repentance is, not being actively involved in that sin. How many of you guys are still active gang members? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sister right there, she's still an active gang. She's still a, she's still she's still banging for for Northside over there. Northside. Yeah, amen. Praise God. How many of you guys are still active Christians? Amen. Participating, ready to be used. You know what I mean? I'm active, ready to go. Amen. Are you inactive? I just want to sit on the sidelines. <laughs> Man. You see some of those, you know what I mean? You might have some, you, you know some. I was inactive, man. I remember there was time, I tell my wife, man, just, ah, I'll wait for you in the car. But we're all the way here already. You just got to walk in the door. The church is right there. I'm good. Go ahead. I'll wait for you out here. Ugh. I hate you. Just kidding. <laughs> Inactive. You know what? Inactive, that's the, that's the perfect definition of inactive. Inactive is, you know what? It's like, it's like running up to the starting line of a race, and then you hear the gunshot to start the race, but you never jump off the starting line. You know what? You have an intention to start something good, but you never follow through. You don't follow through. You know, we need more Christians that will follow through in what they, you know, what they say they're going to do. Amen. You know, you do whatever you need to do. And you get the help and you reach out. You get counseling if you need. And you get help. Get an accountability partner. Put filters on your computer. And God will truly empower you to truly change. You know what? But you got to do whatever it takes. You got to do whatever it takes to uh, get rid of all the sugar. You just got to do it. No matter how. Even you like sugar, man. You're like, but I like sugar. Get rid of it. You got to get rid of the sugar. I mean, you got to do whatever it takes. You know what, us as Christians, you know what, we're not failures. We're those that like to succeed. You know what, we're not the brightest crayon in the box, but we're still a color. And you know what, we're not the brand new crayon, we're the broken crayon. But even being those crayons, we still will be used. Man, and we got to do whatever it takes. You know what, sometimes you got to peel a little bit of that paper off that broken crayon so you can use it some more. Man, you got to do whatever it takes, church. You know, in prison, what we do? 
Man, we call them highlighter sticks. We'll go over there and take one of those uh, from the lollipops. We'll take off the little stick on there. We'll put a little bit of water on it, and we'll peel it off like that, and we'll make a point, and then we'll grind down some pencil shavings, and then we'll dip that little tip in there, and then we could do highlights on some of your photos, man, for free, something that you would pay at an art store, $50. You made it out of a one-cent lollipop stick. Man. I'm telling you, you know what? You can be used. There's a lot of things that, that are useful, but yet we throw them away, church. You know what? Stop throwing each other away. We need to stop throwing each other's gifts and talents away. Why? Because they're things that God has given us to use in the church. Man, don't we want to paint a beautiful picture? Well, it's time to start being your color. We can't all be the brown crayon. Man, some of you are going to have to be a yellow crayon. Some of you are going to have to be a blue crayon. I'll be the broken crayon. It's cool, but we all got to be different crayons, church. You know, but sometimes after doing all this, we still feel dirty and broken. You know, many of you have probably seen those scenes in movies where, you know, somebody does something to a lady that, you know, that just isn't, you know, right. And then they go, you know, and she goes and takes a shower and washes herself off because she feels all filthy and dirty. You know, sometimes that's like us, too. No matter what we do, it doesn't matter how much soap we use, you know, and no matter how much cologne, no matter what clothes we put on, no, no matter what it is, m women, no matter how much makeup or anything you do, you know, but you still feel broken and dirty and ugly. And why is that? It's because you got to learn to forgive yourself. You know what? And when you get to that point in life, all you think about is your mistakes and your faults and your failures. Man, the enemy likes to get us in that, in that point in our life, man. You know, how many of you guys have been feeling like that, man? All you're, all you're seeing in your life is your mistakes, your faults, and your failures. Man, it seems like I can't get a break, church. Man, I was telling my, I was telling my, my, my boss, I told him, man, I was like, man, I was like, when am I going to get a break, bro? I was like, I go, you guys gave me the crappiest jobs all year. I haven't had one single good one. I was like, man, when am I going to get a break? Feeling sorry for myself instead of saying, you know what? Thank you, Jesus, that I got a job. <laughs> you know what? Thank you, Jesus, that I got a job. Man, but we always point that stuff out. You know what? And then we go, oh, I can't go to church. You know what? I, I can't be used in children's ministry. I can't be used with the youth. Uh, I can't be used for, for these revivals. Oh, I can't preach. Uh, I can't do, I can't share. Yes, you can. Forgive yourself. Move on. And let God change you. Amen? And then you're going to have the haunting thoughts. If only I did this. And if only I did that. If only, if only, if only, sabes que? Only ain't going to get you. If only ain't going to get you nowhere. That's right. If only is going to get you in one of them retirement homes. Sitting there drooling down your cheek, sitting on a wheelchair. If only. If only I would have told my kids, you ain't putting me in here. Why? Because I'll kill all of you. <laughs> you ain't putting me in this home. Man, I took care of you, and I put up with you, especially in your teenage years. You're going to put up with me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You're going to change my diaper. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, when regret runs deep, it will hold you captive. How many of you guys are still holding on to regrets from years ago, and they hold you captive? If I only would have did this. Man, my children, my older children haunted me for many years. If I only would have did this and if I only would have did that. And every time I started feeling good and happy about myself, the if only came into play and I felt like garbage again. You know what? I had to get out of that. I had to move forward. Why? Because God wants you to know that you are completely forgiven. Amen. Past, present, and future. He forgave you for all your faults, all your wrongs. You know what? You can't take any of it back. But guess what you can do? You can let God, amen, fill you.
you with the forgiveness that he gives you freely. Accept it and move on. You know why? Because the old sinful person is gone and you are a new creation. If you would allow him, God would begin to paint a beautiful masterpiece with the brokenness of your life. A beautiful masterpiece. Man, a lot of times we forget church. I forget. I forget that I was a drug addict and a thief and a convict and that I was just in prison. You know what? Not so many years back. You know what? I forget about all that stuff. But I got to remember, you know what, and be thankful and say, you know what, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that from all that mess and everything that happened in the past, that you're painting a beautiful masterpiece out of my life. So that way I have something to look forward to, church. That way I can keep on going with a smile on my face. Why? Because I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being sick and tired. And I just want to give God all the glory. Amen. Do you feel that God can never use you because of what you've done or the things that, you know, that, you've, that have been done to you in the past? You know, sometimes I hear people say, you know what, God can't forgive somebody like me. Yes, he can. But you don't know the things that I've done. I don't need to know the things that you've done. Why? Because God knows what you've done. And the word of God tells me that he freely forgives your sins. All you got to do is confess them and he will forgive them. Amen. Because he's a righteous God. You know, and if you feel that way, that there's things in your life that are just unforgivable, I want to tell you here this morning that the first step, amen, is forgiveness. I believe that the Lord is telling you this morning, you're forgiven, so forgive others. But you haven't forgiven yourself. And it's time to let go of this regret. And it's time to forgive yourself. You know, you can't take, that, take back the past. Right. You know what? Let go and forgive yourself. Yeah. You know what? The enemy will call you a deadbeat dad. But you know different. Forgive yourself. I'll pay child support, homie. <laughs> deadbeat that. You know what? The enemy will tell you a whole bunch of things. You know what? You, 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 you're, you're a loser because you didn't go to college or this or that or that. You know what? Shut up, devil. You're a liar. You know what? I forgive myself. I, give, I forgive myself for failing my kids. I, I forgive myself for failing my family. I forgive myself for failing myself. Amen. Right here. Man, because why? We're all unique in our own way. You know what? If you're ever, you know, get messing with somebody, you're messing with yourself. You know what? Forgive yourself for giving up on yourself. And right now, you know what? Rise up from that slumber and tell the Lord to strengthen you. Why? Because man, he wants to use you for his glory and for his honor. You're forgiven, church. And now it's time to move on. You know what the word of God says? That he says, you're forgiven like he told the guy that was sick. He says, you know what? He says, rise, take up your mat, be healed, and walk. You know what? Today is your day. I am forgiven and I'm rising up from this and I'm going to move forward in my life. No more, devil. In Philippians 4.19, growing up. We've got to grow up in the things of the Lord. Let's go there. He says, and my God will liberally supply, fill until full your every need according to his riches and glory. In who? In Christ Jesus. You know, growing up, it's time to grow up. I had to grow up. You got to grow up. Everybody's got to grow up. Our kids got to grow up. And how many of you guys were good at hiding things? You know what? I grew up in an abusive household, and growing up, I was really good at hiding my brokenness. You know, we didn't want to let the teachers know. You know, I remember growing up, you know what I mean, and having bruises up and down my back, and my mom, you know, went all beat up, and I always remember, shh, don't say nothing. You don't want nobody to know, don't say nothing. And I grew up with this brokenness inside of me. 
You know, and I was always hiding it. Why? Because no matter where I went, I was broken and I was sad and I wanted to cry inside, but I couldn't. I had to put a smile on my face and pretend like everything was all right when it wasn't. I was just a little kid that no little kid should have had to experience that. And I grew up as a person who would be able to hide things real good, to put on a mask for every situation, a chameleon. You know, and I thought that if people knew who I really was on the inside, that they would reject me. You know, that's why I always tried so hard to fit in. Even now, I still struggle with this. It's not something that just goes away overnight, church. You know what? I want to be the best at my job. Why? Because I don't want my employers to reject me. You know what? When, when, I, when, I, when I make a friend and I don't have friends, you know what? Because every friend that I've let into my life has only hurt me and broken me, so I, I kind of keep a distance, and I don't like to let people into my life. But every friend that, that I have allowed to come into my life, you know what, has done the same. You know what, I've tried to hide everything in my past because I didn't want them to reject me. Rejection, church. You know, and as a result, I felt a deep ache and an emptiness that nothing seemed to fill. No matter what I did, the ache would not go away. I went to the streets. I got involved in drugs and, and alcohol and you know what and, and, and all kinds of different things, you know what? And and I was always trying to, to replace and, and fill that void, but nothing ever replaced it. None of the relationships, nothing that I ever went through, and I was always messed up, church. Feeling like the broken crayon in the box that was no good, that it didn't have no value when it did. Feeling like the, the crayon in the box that still didn't have no color, that it was dull, but it was the good crayon. But eventually God gave me an illustration of my life. Because see, I had to see it as something else. I had to have a visual instead of relying on, on all these other things and what people were telling me. And God gave me a visual and showed me that I was a broken cup. How many of you guys got those old broken coffee cups inside the, 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 the cupboard there? And when you go to put hot coffee in them, the, the cracks open up and, and the moisture starts seeping out of them. You know what? Those cracks in the cup, the old broken cup, that's me. That was me in the cupboard. I was that old broken cup that, you know what, that nobody wanted to use. I got to get the new one. I got to get the pretty one. I don't want to use that broken one. And I always tried to fit in where I didn't fit in. And I always got involved where I shouldn't got involved. But several tragedies in my life, you know, he showed me that those represented cracks in my cup and that the brokenness that came into my life. You know, he had to show me, you know, that that's what it came into my life. And, and, and those cracks represented that brokenness in my life. Have you ever seen a crack, how it starts out small? Usually on a windshield when you get like a, a nick, sometimes it'll stay there the same forever. And sometimes, you know what, it, it just, you know, gets the, the right, you know, whatever. And it starts cracking more and more and more. Same thing in a cup, you know what, and then you get more cracks from that one crack. And then pretty soon, you know what, it's, it just, it just, it's no good. You know, and however, instead of bringing my broken cup to the Lord, my pain and my brokenness, instead of bringing it to him for healing, I was trying to deal with it myself. A little super glue here, right? If I could put a little bit of, of paint on here on the surface, just a little bit to, to doctor it up. You know what? You'll see a, a girl who's abused by her spouse or a man who's abused, same thing. What will they do? They got a little shiner. They'll go put a little bit of makeup on there to try to hide it, right? Concealer or whatever they call it. You know, some women, they don't like their lips, so they'll, they'll get different. You know, not all women. Don't, 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 not all. Some, they just want, they just want, they want to pretty up a little bit. 
You know, but some women feel insecure in a lot of things that they do, and that's the reason why they do what they do. Some women, you know, they might put, you know, some type of color of lipstick on their lips because it makes them look bigger and fuller because they don't like their skinny lips. See? See? It's true. You know, and that's us, you know what I mean, on our lives. We're always trying to doctor up those cracks in our lives on our own instead of giving them to the Lord. You know, and so the illustration is this. I was trying to fill my broken cup with water from several sources to fill the emptiness I felt inside. Anger management. You know, I went to prison, how to be, how to, how to father from prison, how to become a better father, how to be this, how to be that. You know, it all was all into fitness and health, so I read Arnold Schwarzenegger pumping iron and all that stuff and two scoops of protein and this and that. I was, you know, I was on it. But, you know, I was trying to fill these, these cracks and these voids in my cup from other sources. You know, a lot of times in our lives when we're going through something, church, and, you know, we might be depressed, and what happens? We run to Mardals, right, to go find books on depression. Come on now. Right? Not to say that it ain't good to read and do all this stuff, but you know what? We ought to be going to God. Why are we going to Mardal? Mardal ain't got nothing to offer you but some debt. Every time you swipey, swipey, that Cardi Cardi of yours. <laughs> but no matter what I did, it did not satisfy because my cup was equipped to hold only one kind of water, the living water of Jesus. You know why we feel the way that we do, church? Like we feel like we're not the brightest crayon in the box. You know why we feel like we're, we're not useful? And that why we're getting too old and, and why we're tired and why we're this and why we're that? It's because we're allowing other sources to try to fill our cup instead of Jesus Christ, the source of it all. You know, we should never get tired of doing ministry. You know what? I hear a lot of people, they burned out. Imagine if I was just to say, you know what? I'm tired of preaching. And I came to church this Sunday and I sat there. And you guys were sitting there waiting. What would you guys be saying? Well, when are you going to get up and preach, pastor, right? I said, I'm just chilling today. No. What about the teachers? Same thing. I'm tired. You know, a lot of us get tired. Everybody gets tired, but we keep going. We keep going. You know what? And that's an example to other people. Man, Sister Tish, man, she's been teaching kids. This is, this is Brother Fred's wife, man. She's been teaching kids at Pastor Ray's church ever since he's pretty much been open. 30 years straight, not a, I'm sick today, not I'm calling in, not a, I need a break. Yeah, she had those feelings. I need a break. Yeah, I'm sick. These kids are driving me crazy. But what happened? She knew that that's what she had to do no matter what, faithfully. Amen. Week in and week out, Monday through Sunday. Yeah. And she's never faltered on that commitment. You know, what about us? Where are we getting filled from? You know, who are we relying on, church? You know what I sense God saying to me? Leon, you have committed two sins. You have forsaken me, the spring of living water. And no matter what you do, you will never be satisfied apart from me. I want you to come to my spring of living water that never runs dry. And I believe that the Lord, you know, I heard him speak that to me. And that's even, that's even, that even comes from scripture. You know how I know that's from the Lord? Because it was paraphrased out of Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Let's go there. That's how a lot of us should know that God is speaking to us when, when, when we're testing the spirits. Amen. He says, for my people have committed two evils. They have abandoned and rejected me. And he goes on to say, the fountain of living water. And they have carved out their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. 
See, when you're doing you, you can't do what God wants you to do. Why? Because you're being filled from other sources. You got to let God be your source. And you got to let him fill you. You know what? Sometimes you just got to let go and say, you know, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. If this is what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. And I am sure some of you have felt the same way. I walked through a season in my life when God asked me to surrender my brokenness, my broken cup to him for healing. It was a painful season as I began to face some deep wounds from my past. I was just speaking to my wife the other day, you know what I mean, telling her about how I feel. You know, I don't know about people sometimes, you know what I mean, I they think that everything's just all good. Imagine having to live with, with depression all your life. Imagine having to live with the thoughts of, of suicide and, 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 and death and all kinds of stuff on your mind constantly. And thoughts of, of, of you know, of not, you know, not feeling worth, you know, uh, worth and, and all kinds of stuff that you're worthless. That's me every day. They categorize it as, as bipolarism. But do I allow that to stop me from being who God has called me to be? Do I allow that to make my day? No. Do I say, hey, you know what, I'm going to take those pills that, that you want to give me so that way, you know what, I can just be all messed up and in a cloud and in a bubble? Or am I going to learn to trust in God and allow God to fill my cup as I walk through this life? You know what, even though I feel this way, doesn't mean that I can't be who God has called me to be. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep on going. You know what God does? You know, what God does is when you're going through those, those deep wounds and facing them, and then when you surrender, God takes all those broken pieces and he places them inside his cup. Amen. Thank you, Lord. His cup that no longer had any cracks and was able to hold water. And as I choose to come to him each day, for his living water, my emptiness was replaced with true satisfaction in Christ. You know what? God satisfies me. Before it was a Bud Light, before it was a snort of cocaine, before it was, it was marijuana, before it was, you know, coming up MIA for weeks on end. And now it's not. Now it's facing that. You know, and this is my cup, and I want God to fill this cup. Because God's what makes me whole. You know what? If you put a mug underneath the waterfall, what will happen? The cup will fill with water and then eventually overflow, right? Now you won't even be able to hold that cup. Man, try to hold the cup in the waterfall. The little handle, the little thingy on it will probably break off. You'll be like, oh, where'd my cup go? Living water. You know what? Living water, a, a waterfall has force behind it. It's, it's living. It's active. It's doing something. It's moving. It's not just sitting there. You know what? In that acting, living water with force needs to fill your cup. You need to stick it in that waterfall so that way you can be overflowing church. And that is what begins to happen in our hearts as we are filled with Christ each day will be satisfied and the spirit will begin to overflow in each and every single one of us. You know, do you want to have that, that, that peace? You know what, those springs of living water that are full of joy. You know what, does your laugh bring laughter to those that are around you? You know those guys that just have that funny laugh? And every time you hear it, you just start cracking up. We all got somebody like that in the family, right? Man. I always used to say to myself, I said, you know what? I used to tell myself, I said, man, I said, I hope that my daughter doesn't laugh like Brittany, <laughs> my, my cousin. She has like this high-pitched squeal laugh. And guess what? My daughter laughs just like Brittany and Annette. <laughs> <laughs> but praise God, amen? You know, instead of being needy and going to other people to feel good about myself, or to feel good about yourself, we could begin to have something to give to others. Man, I've been waiting for the day, you know, and it always seems like that in the church, man. There's some needy people in the church, man, right? We all have needs, right? Brother needs this, sister needs that, man. 
This person needs this. This person needs that. Well, we all got needs, church. And it's time to feel good about that. You know what? And start helping others. Come back and say, you know what? Let's start meeting needs of other people in the church. You know what? To start giving people the joy that God gives us when we allow him to fill our cup. You know what? With all those broken cracks in them. Instead of some other source. You know what? Come and bring in people the good news. You know what? The good news that, that Jesus died for them on the cross, cross, cross of Calvary. But they got hope. You know what? They got hope. You know what? And there's something that, that is worth living for. You know what? That life isn't easy. But you know what? You can make it through it. You know what? That you are somebody in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, in Psalms 23, verse 5, it says that my cup overflows. You know what? I love how the amplified version, the classic edition says it. My breaming cup runs over. This is a wonderful picture of how more than enough have more than enough breaming over man that's what we need in our life church right here he says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil my breaming cup runs over <laughs> you want an overflow church do you want an overflow this morning I want you to stand with me here this morning, church. And if that's you that, that, that wants an overflow this morning, amen, and you're tired of, you know, complaining and grumbling about the things that have happened in life, and you're ready to start looking at things in a, in a different mindset, amen, and to allow God, amen, to say, you know what? I'm going to paint a masterpiece with your brokenness in your life. If that's you today, I want you to step out from where you're at and I want you to come up to this altar this morning, amen? Because I'm going to pray with you this morning. Just this circle around this altar this morning, church. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Confirmation? That's what he spoke to me on the message that he sent me this morning. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to get some anointing oil up here, church. And I'm going to anoint you. I know we don't do this very often here. We used to do it every single time. We do altar calls all the time. But you know that pastor, you know, <clears throat> doesn't lay hands on you often. And the reason why, you know, for that is because, you know, I want you to know that you have, you know what I mean, the same ability to do the very same exact thing. But this is biblical, you know, and as your shepherd, I want to anoint you this morning. I want to anoint your head with oil. Amen. Praise God. And I want to pray with you this morning. Amen. As, as your shepherd. Amen. Father, right now, come on up here, sister. I want to pray with you too. Amen. You and you and Sister Jennifer, Amen. Hallelujah. You guys are beautiful, Amen, and special, Amen. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands in this place, Church. Father, right now, Lord, as we've come to this altar, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, over this congregation, Lord God, and I believe, Lord God, that most of us, Lord God, have been, you know, you know. Serving you for a little while, Lord God, or, you know, have just gotten into it, Lord God. But I'm praying, Lord God, here this morning, Lord God, that we wouldn't feel, Lord God, no more, like God, if we're not of any value, Lord God, that we still have plan and purpose in our life, Lord God, that you still want to use us, Lord God, in a mighty way, Lord God. And Father, right now, that we would forgive ourselves, Lord God. Lord, we're tired, Lord God, of holding on to this brokenness, Lord God. And Father, we lay it down at your feet this morning, Lord God. We lay that brokenness, Lord God, before you, Lord God. And right now, Lord God, we ask you to fill this cup, Lord God. You fill this cup with your living waters, Lord God. Right now, Lord God, no outside interferences, Lord God, but your living water. And I pray, Lord God, right now. That you excite my brother Ricky, Lord God. That you ignite him, Lord God, and use him for your glory and honor. Father, right now, Lord God, I pray over my brother and sister, Lord God. You have a mighty plan and purpose in their life, Lord God. 
Lord, right now, Lord God, encouragement and strengthening, Lord God, to continue, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord God, healing and restoration, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, right now, peace and reassurance, Lord God. You're not done, Lord God. You're moving in a mighty way, Lord God. Patience. Oh, Lord, right now, Lord God, healing, Lord God, of brokenness. And Father, right now, Lord God, to forgive themselves, Lord God, to forgive themselves, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, Lord, you have a mighty call, Lord God, right now, Lord God, trust trust you she's going to trust you lord god you're going to use her lord god in a mighty way father right now lord god that brokenness lord god that unforgiveness lord god that hurt lord god she's giving it to you today lord god and right now lord god you're going to use her for your plan and your purpose lord god father right now lord god hurt that hurt, Lord God, and that feeling, Lord God, of, of that self-worth, Lord God, right now, Lord God, she has it. She has peace and joy, Lord God, right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we come before you today, my God. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for answering the prayers, Lord God, and meeting the needs, Lord God, of your people at this altar, Lord God. And Father, we just come, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, to have your way, Lord God, right now. Increase our faith, Lord God. Increase our faith and strengthen us in our weaknesses, my God. And Lord, as we continue to trust you, Lord God, you lead us, Lord God, and you give us the answers we need, Lord. You help us, Lord God. You give us confirmation, Lord God. And Father, we love you. We love you today, Lord. We love you. Begin telling the Lord how much you love him this morning, church. Tell him, church. Tell him how much you love him. <laughs>